I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the shampoos that we use are slowly killing us. Hear me out for a second. These are the three most popular shampoos in America, and every single one of them has ingredients that could be causing you cancer, disrupting your hormones, and even giving you allergies. What? But to really understand what the hell is going on here and how we can figure out a solution, we gotta go back to the start. Our ancestors were plagued by a shit ton of diseases and infections, and they desperately needed a solution. But luckily, one day while cooking a meal over the campfire, a chemical reaction would happen that would change everything. Animal fat mixed with ashes and created a slippery substance that would stick to the oil and dirt on our skin, but then slide right off with water. Until a German perfumer would create the very first liquid shampoo, also made of natural ingredients. But in the 1930s, as science and chemistry improved, two men, owner of Procter & Gamble, one of the biggest consumer packaged goods companies in the world, wanted to make an innovation to shampoo. Look at this side before shampooing. It is limp, but when we wash with today's dream, see how springy and elastic the curls become. Shampoo your hair and keep that date. New Royal Dream can, can dry hair out. And their formula was different. Instead of using a naturally derived surfactant to strip the oil and dirt off of the skin and hair, they used an artificially derived version. It supposedly did a bunch of magical things for your hair, but at what cost? It was a study that found that these synthetic petrochemicals were actually contaminated with a thing called 1,4-dioxane, and it showed that it was carcinogenic in rats and also could be absorbed through human skin. So the Food and Drug Administration ended up starting an investigation to see what the hell was going on here. Wait, why the hell does the FDA not know if there's a cancer causing ingredient in the things that we use every single day? I thought that was literally the point. Wrong. Here's a screenshot literally from their website showing that they need no pre-approvals for the entire cosmetics industry. Let me put this into perspective. The EU prohibits 1,300 ingredients, whereas the US only prohibits 11. And to make it worse, the US is literally the biggest cosmetics market in the world. Well, it turns out the FDA did their investigation, and on the first year in 1979, they found that every single sulfate were contaminated. But the insane thing is they can actually remove this contaminated 1,4-dioxane from the specific ingredient called sodium worth sulfate, which by the way, is still in every single popular shampoo on the market today. And the process is called vacuum stripping. But the problem is we as consumers have no idea if this step that costs more money has even been done in the first place. Studies have now shown recently that they are removing it and it's not really there, but how do we know? And on top of that, no one could have guessed what was about to happen. Procter & Gamble, along with the other shampooing companies, had a bit of a problem. People back in the 1900s only washed their hair around every two to six weeks, which meant there wasn't that much money to be made, but they had a solution. My hair wasn't always so healthy. Now I use Pantene Pro-V shampoo and treatment conditioner every day. Every morning? Regularly. They started running ads portraying that daily washing of shampoo and the new conditioner made your hair healthier. And their manipulation worked. The most recent stat for Americans showed that around 70% wash their hair more than five times per week. But what are the side effects of washing our hair this often? Every single time you do it, it's not just getting rid of the dirt but it's also getting rid of your essential natural oils called sebum, which can do a bunch of good things for your hair. But when you strip them away so frequently, it could lead to a dry, itchy scalp, which could even lead to flakiness and being mistaken for dandruff. Or if you're like me, it can make it even greasier. But in the early 2000s, a bunch of people started getting really fed up with all this bullshit that was being added into our products. And they sparked the no poo movement, which is a really interesting choice of name, if you ask me. <laughs> Those that were a part of the movement ended up either washing with all natural stuff, or they ended up not washing their hair at all and only just opting for water. And interestingly, a bunch of celebrities started being completely vocal about their minimal shampoo usage. And even fellow YouTuber Johnny Harris. I have not shampooed my hair for five years. I wonder what it smells like. 
And just like that, this movement sparked a massive conversation about what we really need to have healthy hair. So after hearing this, I decided to give it a try. And no, I'm not part of this movement. More so, I just want to live a healthier life. And I was sick and tired of my hair. At first, I deemed it the most reasonable decision to end up going from daily shampooing to then going to two times a week. And I switched to a more natural based product. And then over time, I did it once a week. And honestly, in the beginning, it was really freaking greasy. And over time, my hair slowly acclimatized. Now, it just looked like there was a natural paste in it. But then, I decided to push it to a month and I made a big mistake in that video. Not washing your hair does not, I repeat, does not improve your microbiome health. I'm sorry. And that's why you always wanna take everything in life with a grain of salt. But after that experiment did go really well, like my hair still felt great in my opinion. I decided to commit to a full year and you're gonna find out if this was a good thing or a bad thing, because we're gonna get my hair analyzed by a hair expert. And during my experience, I found out something really interesting about the cosmetics industry. Unfortunately, it turns out it's much bigger than just this one carcinogen that we were talking about before. There's actually a shit ton of petrochemicals and problem ingredients in a bunch of the products that we're using. And this is all leading to the development of allergies, cancer, reproductive issues, hormone disruptions, organ toxicity, and it's poisoning our environment. Trust me, I know this all seems really freaking scary because it feels like there's no way that we can protect ourselves, but there is a solution here. And luckily in 2004, we started to get some really strong allies on our side. The Breast Cancer Prevention Partners launched the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, and they've been working extremely hard to get the government and big corporations to change. And in 2023, the US government finally made some constructive improvements to the federal cosmetics policy, which hadn't been changed in over 80 years. But even though this is a massive win, there is still a weak safety standard in place and there's still a lot of work that has to be done. And maybe in the meantime, while it's still being resolved, maybe being crazy like me and not shampooing your hair for a year might be the solution. So it had been 500-ish days since I had washed my hair. And honestly, in my opinion, I thought it was pretty healthy. Like, it was fine. Yes, it did the occasional weird thing. Like if I was wearing my hat too much, I had a bit of an itchy scalp or maybe some dandruff here and there. But like, how bad could it be? All right, so we're about to go see a hair clinic and I'm gonna figure out if not washing my hair for the last year was a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, so we'll start with 200 magnification, so. Whoa, oh my God. So I got the results right here and. It's really bad. Ew. Oh wow, my hair needs love. Like it's literally full of dandruff everywhere. She ranked it a four out a five, which is wild. Cause like, it wasn't even that itchy. She was shocked that I wasn't like scratching my head 24 seven. Plus she also told me that my hair is receding, which I always thought I just had a big ass forehead, but okay. But she did say that if I wash my hair twice a week, even once a week, that's what's gonna be best to support my hair and my scalp. I do believe, and I think this is evidence that keeping the skin environment clear, healthy, and balanced, uh, although it may have not affected your hair in the first year and a half, but I suspect that if you kept going this way in three, four, five years, this could probably accelerate hair loss. It would accelerate some problems in the, in the hair and in the scalp. So I would not recommend it. <laughs> The specialist also mentioned that she would be happy to wash my hair and also show me the before and after and goddamn. And now we're basically just gonna clean, what are we getting, a scalp facial? Scalp, it's the detox from your scalp. This is insane. It's been a really long time since it's felt like this. It's always like felt greasy. Yeah, it's felt very greasy for a very long time. Never do it again. Never, never again. Never. Never. Uh, thanks for washing my hair. Appreciate it. So she washed my hair twice. Whoa, it looks like a different hair color. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, so much better. Oh, there's no dandruff anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's all shiny. Oh, is that how supposed hair is supposed to look? 
Yes, <laughs> it is. So what's the solution here? So that I can have healthier hair while also avoiding all these hazardous chemicals in the products that we use every day. Here's gonna be my three part strategy moving forward. First, I've decided the best thing for me is gonna be really avoiding all the various marketing labels that are not regulated at all, instead opting for reading the ingredients. And I'm gonna be buying from companies that are transparent about their ingredients and are aligned with clean, toxin-free products. Second, I'm gonna try my best to scan the products that I use with these clean ingredient apps. They're gonna warn me of anything that I might have missed or any of the hidden ingredients that might be there. And finally, if I'm really wanting to go to the next level, I can then cross-reference the ingredients with these three sources that I've linked below. Thank you so much for watching the video. And to make sure you never miss out on a video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so I can see you in the next one.